Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Loading. In this episode, um, I'm going to do some kind of uh, explorations, um, a study based on this uh, this kind of artwork from Rico Siliers. I was inspired um, to do a study on fern. He made this fern and then he was sharing this um, radius and tilt um, technique. We already talked about it in the previous uh, live noting. But I like how he designed this uh, this fern and he did he did this of course manually and then he has this uh, amazing attention to details and he designed the fern and then the final result looks like this. And I'm pretty sure that each of the fern is probably the same or he might have a few bits of variations that he made. Um, he basically used the array modifier and then and I think he also used the curve modifier to get this kind of design so I did a, a little bit of drawing and kind of thinking okay maybe you kind of you can design it something like this uh, procedurally using spread chalk and it's really depending of of how much details you want to design this fern um, and I came up with something called I don't know it's like a fern, fern logic um so thinking a plant and in, in this case like a fern it started from maybe we have some kind of spine and then the spine kind of um, have uh, all this kind of branching but sim like a simpler branchings only like to the left and to the right i have uh, photos of fern i think so this is the main kind of uh, spine and then his, it has the, like this kind of branching to the left and to the right. Um, if you're kind of kind of designing this, maybe you can actually fake the whole thing, you know, turn the whole thing into like a single texture and just use that. Or if you want more details, of course you design this middle part and then you kind of making this uh, array of leaves. You can even go smaller. Um, I don't know, I think this is a really interesting example and each part, every smaller part is basically part of bigger thing and then this smaller part is also part of even bigger things and the whole thing is kind of repeating. Of course, this is like the, the whole world of fractal. Um, it's like L system that uh, we can definitely design um, procedurally. So. Uh, yeah, it's interesting to study. I don't, I don't know. Um, maybe I'm just gonna do like a quick improv. So let's say um, just like um, this work by Rico Ciliers. Um I think he's gonna do like a YouTube video tutorial on his one. I'm gonna try kind of explore the idea in Spiritual. So I'm pretty sure if he's um, he's building this uh, fern like this uh, I imagine um, maybe here so one leaf um, in this case I'm just gonna extrude this this guy and you know just pull this face like that and going to scale it down in the z-axis just imagine this is one of the leaves and I'm gonna put that to the side like that and if he has like this kind of um, array array modifier and kind of growing it upward I don't know if he used relative or constant but basically going up he can have something like that and then because it's kind of switching to the left and to the right I I think he actually used this uh, empty and with that empty you can of course do this kind of uh, offset if I make it like a uh, make the this guy smaller so now we start to get a more interesting array um, RZ and then rotate it in the maybe rotate it 
180 degrees and we start to get kind of more interesting structure maybe this is what he did um, I'm not quite sure exactly that's starting to resemble the fern and of course he might have the the top part and the bottom part as well um, and then he also used the curve kind of to control the directions of this fern mm. let me try I'll save this as we fern basic this is not like super detailed version um, just an experiment um, we're gonna leave the locator there this curve thing is uh, interesting um, okay I have a curve like that um, gonna go to edit mode and scale it I think instead of uh, Bezier I'm gonna use uh, different type of curve just polygon set spline polygon polygon is simpler view uh, from the front view and then I'm gonna try that make a few subdivision and now we should have this kind of curve to control the fern so I'm I don't do this kind of manual works too often uh, but sometimes you can learn just by doing it manually and then trying to see how you can rebuild it procedurally yeah I guess this is a kind of a workflow so the curve deforming this guy and for each each part um, he probably use this uh, discipline some kind of a uh, texture for it and it but the results still you know that's pretty realistic and I don't know he's he has really good uh, skill on lighting and shading uh, which is important as well uh, for what we are doing let me think let's see if we we want to use this array and curve and we kind of want to work like semi procedurally uh, let's see what's gonna happen let's imagine if instead of instead of using this uh, cube what if I just replace it with something else like uh, okay this is the original cube I'm gonna merge it okay now we have nothing and okay just that single vertices and if I kind of extrude it that way and we go back to the top and we have um, this guy is a kind of offsetting so this empty is offsetting the, the line of course I need to put the line in the exact position in order for this to work Few top Put that and then fill front and orthographic. Yes, I guess that should work. Okay, so this is the curve. We can hide the curve, and this is the locator. Hide it now. We have just just this guy, just this line um, I guess where is the original this line is also dependent on this empty well anyway I'm gonna work with this and gonna switch to compositing turn on stretch out and new node 3 of course um, Ideally, we want to do everything inside SpreadShop, but for now, we're gonna kind of semi procedurally working. Uh, so, how many array do we have? 30, reduce it to 10 for now. Gonna grab it, object in, 
get selection, post modifier, and then view the points. So we have one, two. Interestingly, it's a bit off. Maybe I need to use uh, matrices as well. And I think I need to reset the position of this line. Yeah, I think that's more correct. Okay, cool. Uh, let's observe this guy. Um, this is, of course, some kind of array, and it's getting smaller and smaller because of the the object offset. This is uh, something that you can um, recreate inside StretchOff easily or the hard way, but it's uh, it's still pretty logical. But anyway, we have this uh, kind of a uh, sequence of points, and let's observe this guy using index viewer index plug in the vertices there and then look at the number 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so we have this kind of sequence um, the funny thing about this guy is if we separate the points so let's say we get the just the odd number we get the stem and if we get the even number we get this kind of zigzag uh, let's have a look we can we can modify this guy in many different ways let's see uh, let's use list masking first of all list mask and then get this data and then data if true and data if false see I am just I just changed the level is to now Level, uh, level 2 and then now we have this is the just the outside part and then if I change to the false we get the inside inside part like uh, this is the the odd number part so you have two two kind of uh, possibilities there already um, knowing these points of course you can do all sort of things uh, pretty easily um, you can also kind of use uh, the easy one, like using the separate loose part. Mm, something like this, and if you use a uh, viewer, you can get the the line. Okay, and they they are all separate, so. We can use spread chalk, vector, um, interpolation, and from here we can use the UV connection and reconnect everything. Um, actually, I did something. I did something wrong. I think this is separate loose part and vertices goes to this guy. And oh, okay. We need to use a range float. And now we have some kind of interpolation. And then we have we can make this. Um, that's not the UV connection that I want. I want it in the other direction. So U directions. You see what happened uh, here. We are doing resampling of every array of this guy. Of every array of the of the lines. Uh, which is really nice. If we if we go back here and then increase the number and kind of refresh, we still get it. So for each line now we have subdivisions. That's cool, and we can have as many as we want or as uh, less it's totally up to you and everything is still controllable using array modifier and with the curve okay so we have this guy and we can have the center part as well no problem um, what else
we can of course like um, do some kind of randomization here if you use like a uh, randomized input photosis here just kind of makes that kind of adjustment if you like because uh, but if you are doing it like this everything is the same unless you use like a range integer and then randomize the seed now everything every single ages have different randomization so that's a uh, that's really cool right so suddenly you have this ability to deform each and every part um, of the line so we, we're not gonna do randomization yet perhaps um, Perhaps you want to create some kind of a, like a branching, like that. Uh, if you remember the old live nodding video, I think I made, I actually made something like this at some point. Um, let's actually do that now. Let's see if I actually remember how to do this. So we have 15 edges different 15 different array of points I think I use I actually use zip at some uh, back then uh, I'm gonna use okay I'm gonna use random randomized input vertices actually and then I'm gonna get this random points And we're gonna connect the original points and the randomized points somewhat. Integer. Okay. We have random points and the original points. We're gonna pair. We're gonna pair them. Uh, let's use list zip. So we're gonna zip this together. And there's a viewer. Render just decided to crash, so I'm gonna restart real quick. I think list zip is the, uh, the right way to do this. We're gonna end up with a lot of um, edges actually, so be careful with this file set as so zip and then viewer draw check the vertices. Okay, unwrap. Um, let's try, I think, unwrap and then UV connection. Yeah, there we go. That's a uh, it's it's working right away, so that's cool. Um, but we need to probably randomize this guy like we did earlier. Range integer and count. For now, we're gonna just make this manually. But the count can be can look actually by how many we have I think 15 okay 15 let's just connect it properly so 15 list length get this the number the total number of this guy like that 15 okay plug it in to that guy okay cool all right so like I said this is all still kind of procedural from the array blender on array modifier and then a curve modifier this way you can actually make like some kind of Christmas tree a proper Christmas tree but 
we're not gonna do that yet actually gotta reset the rotation here because otherwise it's get you know out of control it's too complex too fast R Z 180 okay back to our fern uh, probably a little bit spiky at the moment so at this stage now if we think about it each and every um, edges can become another like a fern um, currently they're like um, just very random all over the place in all directions uh, but they can be more regular like um, side by side or that's actually something that probably I should do next um, to generate um, this kind of uh, structure side by side kind of like zigzaggy and by doing that you can design that and then you can also do that it's become a little bit like L3 system with L3 system or like a generative structure you can you can do it you can kind of do this quite easily just replacing one with a uh, another it's kind of like a recursive as well it's a complex style that I'm also still getting used to uh, for now gonna get back to this guy let's see what else we can do here? Mm, the original. This is this guy typing that guy. Where right, right, right am I seeing here? Also give you. Okay, maybe that's not a good idea. We can get Spreadshock to kind of output this uh, this line. So this and that still pretty regular. So I should have uh, used noise to kind of disturb this line before I plug in into the list zip and this. So I will good. I will use um, vector noise and vector math from this guy. Plug into that guy and add a bit of noise. Add and then plug that in. So now this guy a little bit more funky now. Um, although the first point the first point actually shouldn't move um, I guess that's okay for now this is a little bit just a little bit too crazy let's use spectral math and control this the noise scale a little bit not like that that's somewhere here yeah I guess that's that's all right that's better and we have I'll give a different color so we have that stem uh, that's branching and then we want this smaller guy green color I have to update I have to update this guy and this guy okay so now that's a little bit better and we also probably want to display the middle part 
the middle part can come from this guy with a UV connection of course so the middle part can be purple okay middle part seems to be working correctly so like I said if I if you want if I turn on a playback and then kind of make adjustment to the array everything updates see and if we are very keen we can do this uh, continue doing this array until it's kind of disappearing on the top Okay, one little problem is that uh, the length, the length of this uh, branching currently is just, this guy is just random, doesn't have any control, it's just random in all directions, so that's the only limitation at the moment, although really I think you can control that if you want by using a uh, range float or something maybe I'm not sure it's probably a bad idea but start stop Start from the loop and then make it longer at the top. It doesn't seem to be a good idea. Actually, I have I can control the count. So it should be the opposite way, I think. Mm. do it the opposite way I think that's just adding too much complexity there. Cancel the idea. Mm, what else we can do? Of course you can use a skin modifier for each and every edges. That's a uh, one idea. But we're gonna end up with a uh, many many objects and we don't want that. Um, better idea is to combine combine all this into a single object first like uh, using maybe using mesh join so mesh join this is normally what I I do like kind of testing it um, if I bake now each and a green part is a single object so it's easier to manage like that Ideally, the whole thing is becoming a single system, a single monad um, of a uh, fern. Um, I think the only problem at the moment is just this, uh, the fern thing is too random because of this uh, randomized input vertices. It should really be something that's kind of grow smaller and smaller or like much simpler like this guy and then you kind of you have the dots and kind of push it up so you have points like that and then you have points on the side and kind of connect the two 
think I did that at some point already. That's uh, that can be easy to create, and uh, but I think that's gonna be the homework. Um, I'm gonna update it in the GIS maybe. But this is gonna be it for this live coding video. Um, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, this is at the moment. Uh, this guy is like a semi-procedural. I like to have this kind of user control and then we have the array and then this guy each part making more details as needed um, so this is kind of unfinished business but we're gonna take a look um, later in the future maybe like a proper um, fern kind of uh, setup so if you have any question feedback suggestion just let me know and I'll see you in the next video thanks thank you bye